Hey there, just doing a video for Michael in Dusseldorf. Oh. But first, I just want to show my old Technics turntable. 40 years old this year. There she is. Mm. All right. Mm. Just a response. Just a response to uh, one of your older videos that I commented on today. Um, yeah, it's it's a shame about uh, you know the goat's head soup um, 50th anniversary being. Um, not particularly to your satisfaction. To your satisfaction, you can't get no satisfaction. And uh, but the last time I oh, don't be silly. Um, yeah, hang on. Oh, um, I can't speak Italian, but I'll let Peroni, Nastra Azzurro, Blue Ribbon. Any Dagos out there watching this, congratulations. Mamma mia. Um, okay, it's just two Stones albums. I've been on a Stones kick lately, because they're going to die soon, and you know, so am I. But they're a fair bit older than I am. Seven to 13 years older. So... I'll probably go before them, knowing those bastards. But uh, um, yeah, I just want to comment on the goat's head soup. I, I would recommend if you can't, just try and get yourself, if you can. This is a Japanese, original Japanese, 1973. Beautiful, thick cardboard. I've had this forever and a day. It's not the very... I bought the Australian copy first. I probably got this later on, but it is an original 73 copy. I probably got that a few years later when I saw it and went, oh, that looks better than the Australian one. And... Uh, Done with their usual. I love reading these for the um the bad the English. Here we go. Um, of course, star 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 fucker. They they miss um heard it here as well. They've got star bucker. <laughs> star bucker star bucker star. Yeah, pretty funny. Repeat three times. Mm. Yeah, so anyway, I'm um, getting off track. Uh, yeah, 1973 copy. The reason why... I, 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 look, there are three Stones books I highly recommend. Life by Keith Richards, um, Marion Faithfull's um, autobiography, and the one I'm reading at the moment is When I'll... Old Gods Soon to Die, which was actually written 20 years ago. The dirt on the stones in those three books is, is fantastic. You've got to love them. A very crazy mixed up family, that's for sure. And the reason why those four albums, plus this one, not to the same extent as in, I mean, Beggar's Banquet, Let It Bleed, pretty much just the stones with the occasional well no not let it bleed it, that's when it really they got a lot of american musos in on let it bleed and then sticky fingers exile on main street their masterpiece and goat's head soup not their masterpiece but acceptable um they got in all those american musos and they just 
right to a different level. Something that had always been missing all the way along. Before it was pretty much sustained with Brian and James trying to be the extra muser in the band, fiddling around with instruments. Me and Stuart on piano occasionally, or a lot. Nicky Hopkins, but yeah, those four. And um, on this one, you've got Bobby Keys, Jim Horn, Chuck Finley. I mean, it, it, it just makes it a completely different band. You know, I mean, I, I love the early Stones and I love that classic period Stones. And after this album, Goat's Head Soup, I, I got no time from it all. I actually, you know, bought um, It's Only Rock and Roll. I think I played it three times and got rid of it. It was just shit. Uh, a friend of mine bought Black and Blue and I, I was in the reggae at the time. And when I heard their attempts at reggae, I went, oh, God help us. I did buy some girls years later, many years later, the uh, rare uh, withdrawn cover one. But I gave it to my nephew. Even that album doesn't do it for me. It, it's just sounded false and fake and forced. So, yeah, I'm sorry about you not being happy with uh, your goat's head soup, Michael, in Dusseldorf. But I, I know you, I think this is probably your favourite one, as you were about almost 20 years younger than I am. That would have been about the time you started getting into them. So look out for a, a, an original Jap copy. And, uh, you know, it's as good as you'll get. It won't get any better than that, I can tell you now. It won't get any better. Um, and, uh, and the other one I haven't shown before is my sticky fingers. This one doesn't have the zipper, thank God, because it was just stupid. It ruined every other album you put in front of it. So this is a reissue. I did not buy this at the time. I know I didn't because the last uh, album I actually bought um, before that was Let It Bleed. And then there was a, almost a two-year gap between Let It Bleed, which is a friggin' masterpiece, as is Beck. Well, Beggar's Bank was almost a masterpiece. Um but uh, Let It Bleed and Exile Main Street, wow, that's them at their darkest and nastiest. There's a few weak tracks on uh, Sticky Fingers. Um, now, Brown Sugar Side 1, I did mention in my comment that uh, Mick Jagger was down here in Australia making a, a, um, a movie, Ned Kelly. I went and saw it with my tripping buddy, Pete. And, oh, Christ, it was embarrassing. You know, he comes out with a fake beard on and he's mincing around, going, oh, and he has a fight with a huge guy and he's going, like this. It was so embarrassing. I try not to look at anything with Mick Jagger or David Bowie or it, it, acting. It's just awful. It destroys everything. Anyway, Brown Sugar, side one. If you play Hot Gully Wind by ten year, uh, by the Masters Apprentices, the Australian band, they have Hot Gully Wind, which is... Um, it's the same as the opening of Brown Sugar is rips completely stolen from Hot Gully Wind. It's not completely stolen. They just change it just enough. But he wrote that out here in Australia while Marion Faithful was recovering from a suicide attempt in the Sydney hospital. And uh, he must, I reckon he must have heard um, Hot Gully Wind by the Master's Apprentices because that riff is just struck. Anyway, even the guitar has the same tone. Sway's all right. Wild Horses is classic. Can't You Hear Me Knock and starts out really young. And then it just sort of goes into a a waffly so-called groove, which is not going anywhere at all. You've got to move tiresome. Bitch is killer. That's the track on this album. I got the blues, corny, but okay. Sister Morphine, a classic. You know, Marion Faithful wrote it, basically. 
with a bit of help from Mick and Keith. Dead Flowers, which is one of their funny, I love their funny country songs. And Moonlight Mile, I cannot stomach. I just can't stand it. It makes me sick. I don't know why. Um, yeah, so I mean, with Mick Taylor, he, he was a real musician like the American guys, unlike the Stones, who are just sort of enthusiastic amateurs, you know. Um, and Mick Taylor saved the Stones in those five years, we, or four years he was with them, saved them. Uh, especially on Goat's Head Suit. Keith's barely on this album, you know. He, he's got his wonderful track on there, Coming Down Again. That, that was, he was so into it. I saw the Stones just before this came out in early 73 in Sydney. And Keith was so zonked off his head. I always remember going, I'd seen Led Zeppelin the year before and I just went, oh Christ, this is awful as shit. And Mick was pissed off at Keith. He kept going, he was yelling at him. We were right up the front. We were, we, we were, we were way right up the front. We recorded it on a tape, you know, bootleg thing. And he was so pissed off with Keith. Keith was just nodding off, you know. Boom, boom. So Mick Taylor saved the stones. He really did. And um, Gates Head Soup, I consider a Mick Jagger album. And uh, Mick Taylor should have got a hell of a lot more credit, you know, for the success of that album. And just to finish up, there's the, the wonderful classic shot of the boys. And this is a very nice thick vinyl copy. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. I did not buy this when it came out. I think I waited about a year. I sort of let it bleed with such a heavy album, with such heavy vibes. And then that was 69, you see. And then I got into King Crimson, Van de Graaff Generator, and so many, so many others, Progal Harem. And this sort of just didn't, it was okay. But it's in retrospect, like 50 years later, I love those four albums. Really love them, you know. Even, I think Sticky Fingers is the weak one of those four. And some people say that's the best. 1227. Sayonara.